Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have all of the books that I ended up reading in the later half of June. Now I didn't read a lot of books in the later half of June so if you want to know more of the books that I read in June before this point you can go check out my June mid-month wrap-up which will be linked down below. I read more than what I have listed here. Um, but the main reason why I didn't read that much is because I was at Book Bonanza. I was in Dallas for a week and I think I read a total of two books that entire trip and they were both novellas. So take with that what you will. I was like entertaining myself in other ways that week. I was spending time with friends and going out places with them and meeting authors and getting books signed. Like it was a fun weekend, but I didn't get a lot of reading done and I'm totally okay with that. So the first two books that I have to mention are for the Summer of Tessadere read along. We had our live show on my channel for the last three works in the Spindle Cove series. Um, so we read Being the Blacksmith, but I talked about that in my last wrap up. Um, so the next one is book four of the series, which is Any Duchess Will Do. And book 4.5 is Lord Dashwood Missed Out. So um, I ended up reading these two books for the read along and for the live show that we had. I'll link the live show down below if you have not seen it yet. It was super duper fun to chat with all of my friends. These are both rereads for me and I love rereading this series so much. It's so fun. Any Duchess Will Do is about Pauline who's from Spindle Cove who ends up getting roped into being the worst duchess ever for this duke whose mother's trying to set him up with her. Um, and if she's like the worst duchess ever, he will pay her a handsome sum so she can open up a bookshop in Spindle Cove. And then uh, Lord Dashwood Missed Out is kind of like a second chance romance with a heroine who ended up writing a bunch of essays about this guy who left her and missed out on everything that they could have done. But then they bump into each other again when they're forced to be in the same carriage and travel together. There's like a cabin situation, alone in a cabin together, forced proximity, uh, snowed in. Um, it's a great fun little read. I gave Any Duchess Will Do five stars. It's one of my favorite books in this series. And then Lord Dash Little Miss Out is 3.5. It was enjoyable, but not my favorite Tessa Dare book. Um, and it's a little novella. And I think this should have been a full length book in my opinion, but it's fine. I had so much fun buddy reading these books with all my friends. Next I have a new favorite read of mine. If you're wanting to read a cowboy romance, if you need a cowboy romance in your life, pick up Rain Me In. Okay, Kayla, the author of this book, like, oh, she did a phenomenal job with this book. I loved it so much. The cover obviously reined me in. <laughs> Rain me in. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> um, but the cover in here, whew, it is good looking. The, the author did an amazing job with commissioning whoever did this artistry because it's so good. So I heard right here Blake, Blake Tanner, um, has not been to her small town in five years. Five years ago, her younger brother ended up passing away and she hasn't really been back since, but her mother ends up getting in an accident and she has like a boot on her foot and she can't walk around all that much. And so she comes back to the small town to help take care of her mother and the ranch that they live on. She just expects to like have like a quiet little life in the small town and like when her mother's up and running she'll move back to the city. However, she ends up going to the local country western bar with her dad and the guy who works there who is very attractive ends up convincing her to ride the mechanical bull in the bar and she is not very happy about this. She has her own reasons. And said guy is Gavin who works in the bar and he was actually uh, Blake's younger brother's best friend. So Blake is actually a few years older than Gavin. So you have like a little bit of an older woman romance that gap is not large, um, but growing up, Gavin had the biggest crush on Blake. Like he thought she was stunning, so cute, but because of the age difference and she was off doing other things like older people do, um, he never thought that he'd have a shot with her, but he sees this as the perfect opportunity to like make her his when he sees her in the bar. But they don't really get off on the right foot because <laughs> Blake is not too happy that she has to ride this mechanical ball. That's all I wanna leave you with because it's so fun. Like I love their chemistry so much. And just like their whole background, they're both dealing with grief in different ways. I believe the hero's 
father ended up passing away a few years ago. Kayla obviously lost her brother and so they're both dealing with grief in here. So there is a heavy emphasis on grief in this book. Um, and I love the discussion about it. I really loved both of these characters, Gavin and Blake. I thought were very dynamic individuals and the author did a great job at developing their characteristics. And I also just love how smitten Gavin was with Blake. Like I love me a smitten man. He was smitten and the fact that he's a cowboy, like <laughs> yes. So a memorable quote in here that I loved is from Gavin's point of view. He says, good God, Blake Tanner is perfect. Maybe too perfect for someone like me, but I'm too selfish to let her go. Not that I could. Like, I love that kind of man. Men who know that they're not good enough for the woman that they want, um, but they don't care. They're like, they're mine. She's mine. I don't care. I love those kinds of men. I call that like being a Chuck Bass man. <laughs> Because that gives me Chuck Bass vibes and I love it. I love it. Um, for trigger warnings, you have loss, grief, alcohol abuse, and depression. For tropes in this one, you have brother's best friend. It's character driven. It's a cowboy romance. You have a uh, tortured, damaged heroine. This hero has a mouth on him. That's a new trope of mine, has a mouth on him. <laughs> uh, hero falls first. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There is no third act breakup, which snaps all around, okay? Um, older woman, plus size representation, a possessive hero, it's small town, and you have a tall heroine. So yes, I gave this book five out of five stars. Please pick this one up. Next, I have The Mountain's Mate by Sarah Ivy Hill. <laughs> I picked this one up because I saw this like bizarre graphic on her Instagram, like that she commissioned for the characters in this book. Um, well, actually, no, it's for the characters in book two, because the hero in this one's red, but the guy in book two is blue. I haven't read book two yet. And I saw the illustration of book two and I was like, what is this? It's like you have this giant monster alien creature who's literally giant. And in the photo, like he's literally holding the heroine in his two hands. Like he fits in her hand and it's a romance between them. Like she's that small compared to him. Like I was like, how is this going to work? But I was curious, so I had to figure it out. So I read book one. So Patrick is the type of alien that's freaking huge, if you could not tell. Um, and he is shocked when a very small human woman, woman <laughs> ends up winding up on his doorstep who answered his ad to help kind of complete a secret heist with him. Her name is Maya. And she is in need of some money. She's in need of money for rent if she does not make rent soon. Like she'll be evicted and kicked out. And she's one of the few humans on this planet that is not a slave. And so if she gets turned out on the streets, like she's gonna get taken no matter what. So she needs this money. So she accepts a high paying job online without even looking at the qualifications or what the job entails. She's absolutely astonished when the door opens to like the residence she has to be at. And Patrick is there and he's this giant, red alien dude. They have to perform this like heist thing together and it is absolutely hilarious. I don't know if the author meant for me to cackle my butt off when I did, but I did. Like I was laughing so hard because of the logistics of everything. Like it was so funny. <laughs> there are some scenes in this book that will just live in my mind rent free. There's a certain scene where like they're performing this heist together and he has to hide her and there's nowhere for her to hide except for a certain area and she has to hold on to something if you know what I mean in order to like get out of there and have her not be seen like I was like what is going on it was so entertaining though like I could not put it down and I was laughing so hard like it was so funny. So I do want to read book two. The blue guy, like I do want to read it. Okay, um, for tropes in this one, it's a funny read to me. Um, it's monsters, there's a size difference galore in this book, okay? Um, and this book is on Kindle Unlimited. I give this book 3.5 out of five stars. I had a fun time. Another monster romance that I picked up is Crow by Layla Faye. Crow is this like crow creature you see on the cover. Like, I don't really know what he's like supposed to look like, but I don't know if it's supposed to be like the cover. Like. He's cursed to be a crow shifter. I think he was like originally a fae from a differing land. He ends up getting cursed by this witch um, into becoming a crow shifter creature um, and gets exiled to Earth. And there he ends up across our heroine and he just becomes totally enchanted by her and he ends up stalking her. So this is like a stalker romance. He literally forms like a crow's nest, like right outside her bedroom window um, and watches her 
all the time in his crow form, but he can also shift into this humanoid form like you kind of see on the cover. I don't know if this is what he's supposed to look like. This dude is scary and like not like hot scary, like I don't like him. Um, so I pretend he looks like something else, okay? So he keeps his distance from Veronica the heroine because like, who's gonna want him? Like he's like, this woman would be utterly terrified of me. So I'm not even gonna make my presence known. But then one day her ex comes and is like about to like beat her up. And um, he's like, that's not happening. So he goes to rescue her and he like turns to walk away. But Veronica's like, wait, no, you just saved my life. Like, who are you? And she is not like scared of him and he is shocked. Another super entertaining monster read, nothing much else to it. If you want like a crow shifter. <laughs> Crow shifter monster romance um with like some magicalness in there you should pick this one up it was very entertaining tropes in here hero falls first it's a monster romance it's paranormal it's magical you have to shifter it's a novella and you have a stalker i gave this book three out of five stars another novella that i picked up is the mobster's masseuse by jessa kane i just decided to pick up a jessa kane why the heck not? Walker McManus in here is our hero and he ends up becoming totally obsessed with his masseuse. Her name is Meadow and um, she is in shock when this guy comes in for his appointment and from the moment that he sees her, it's like insta love. Like he is full on in like, you're mine. He's never been this way with a woman before, but once he sets his eyes on Meadow, like nothing is going to take her away from him. And she's not really on board per se as much as he is because, uh. He uh, doesn't know her, she doesn't know him. And so she's like, well, what is going on? I'm not going with you, I don't know you. So he decides to kidnap her instead and take her to his estate um, where he is a mafia boss. And he's gonna try to convince her to be his. Another fun, entertaining radio, short, sweet, um, but hot. Uh, it's a Jessica Kane book. You know what you're gonna get with a Jessica Kane book. Um, if you're not a fan of Insta Love, don't pick this book up because the hero like goes, right on in. The heroine falls pretty fast as well. So tropes in here for Insta Love. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a mafia book. There's kidnapping and it's a novella. I give this book three out of five stars. And the last two books that I have to mention are a part of a series. So I ended up picking up The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen in preparation for Book Bonanza because this author was there. I ended up meeting her. I got my book signed and everything. Um, I wanted to buy book two while I was there. But when I got to a table, they were like all sold out of everything. So um, I got a book plate for my book instead. So that's gonna go in my book. Anyway, um, this is the first book in a fantasy romance series in the Bridge Kingdom series. However, books one and two are kind of like about the same couple. And I think the next books in the series are about a different couple that we've met in these books. Um, so the hero and the heroine of this book, Lara and Aaron, um, like their romance wraps up in book two. Um, but the series continues after that point, if that makes sense. So um, I ended up reading The Bridge Kingdom and The Traitor Queen. I can't really talk about The Traitor Queen because anything that I say will be a spoiler, but The Bridge Kingdom was highly entertaining. I actually, I think I talked about this in my book Bonanza haul that I did, um, but I was reading this book, like listening to it. I listened to it on my drive up to Dallas and I walked up to Janielle L. Jensen's table and I was like, I'm currently reading this, but I'm struggling because your book has sharks in it and I'm terrified of sharks. Um, so this book does have sharks in it. So I put that in the trigger warning list, okay? <laughs> Cause I think it should be a trigger warning as someone who's terrified of sharks. Oh, and if you're scared of snakes too, like this book's got a lot of snakes as well. Very poisonous snakes. Anyway, this is about Lara who is a princess to this country, this fantasy country and or fantasy land. I don't know. Um, but she has been raised along with her sisters her entire life to become the best spy and assassin possible. She has also been raised to be the best, most desirable wife because her father has a plan for one of his daughters to end up marrying King Arryn of this neighboring land that controls this bridge in their land that is very coveted. So he's like, I want one of my daughters to marry him, become a spy and spy on us, spy on them for us and end up killing this king. So Lara ends up becoming said future wife and she ends up marrying RN and getting introduced to his people and his way of life. What she didn't expect was to fall in love with Arn and his country. She was not expecting that whatsoever. And she is dealing with the inner battle of like, what do I do now? Like my whole entire life, I have been raised to hate his people, to hate him. But I think I've been lied to my entire life. Like what is going on? This fantasy romance series was highly addictive. Okay. I cannot put the audiobooks down. The audiobooks are really good. They do like a dual narration sort of thing. Like it's 
It's so good. And I think all the books in the series are on Audible Plus, if I'm not mistaken. And yes, this book was a little bit difficult for me to read because of my shark phobia. Like, <laughs> Aaron and his people, when someone like does something bad, uh, they just throw them in the ocean when the sharks eat them. Like, uh. It's terrifying. Also their romantic dynamic was really interesting to me. I loved reading about them as individuals and as a couple together and seeing their romance like fully blossom. Cause at first they don't trust each other at all. Like they're from like rivaling kingdoms. Like they do not get along. Um, but seeing them fall in love with each other was beautiful to me. But I was honestly waiting for the other shoe to drop like the entire time I read this book when it comes to Lara and her secret keeping. Like, you know what's gonna come out at some point, right? So trigger warning in here for sharks, death, murder, and snakes. For book number one, I ended up giving this book four stars, I ended up giving five stars. I love this one way more than book one. I think this one flowed nicer. It had a lot of more drama and romance between the two characters. And so I love book two so much. I did enjoy book one as well. For tropes for this series, you have assassin turned lover, fantasy romance, a married couple, arranged marriage, caretaking scenes galore. Like both of them get injured multiple times in the series and they take care of each other. Um, it's on Audible Plus. Uh, both of them are royalty. It's a marriage alliance romance. You have a wedding in here um, and you have a kick butt heroine. Um, yeah, I gave this book four stars and I gave that one five stars. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I ended up reading in the later half of June. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a crown emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.